Welcome everyone to episode 42 of Missing Pieces. If this is your first time watching or listening, my name's Greg and this is the podcast where I sit down and I discuss my life, Lego, and anything else that's on my mind that week. This of course is being uploaded to YouTube, but if you would prefer to listen to these episodes, they're also available everywhere that podcasts are available, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and I think about 10 other platforms as well. In fact, I was kind of curious this morning, so I went on to Anchor and I checked what the statistics are, and there's about 500 people each week that are just listening to these episodes, and I think that is really cool. Speaking of things that are really cool, perfect transition into our Patreon thank yous for the week. We had a few people join us here, and I want to send a thank you out to Matthew, who sent me a very nice message on Patreon, Amal, Thomas, who came back to Patreon, and also to Chris. Thank you guys so much for supporting not only this podcast, but this entire channel. That is much appreciated. For this week's episode, I have my whole outline here, and I sometimes have a, like a title or an idea in my mind as to what this is gonna be. At this point, I don't really have that yet, but I can tell you that this episode is gonna be very Lego-based. So that's gonna make some of you guys very happy where I get into my entire life and you're like, wait, I thought this is Lego podcast. Well, it is, and it isn't, but uh, this episode will be Lego focused, and we're gonna start off with the biggest topic of the week, which I'm only gonna talk about very briefly here, and that's when I got rejected from the LAN. If you guys wanna know anything about this, I thought about talking about this in this episode, but I don't think that, I don't think it's necessary. If you want to know all about that, I have a, an episode, it's almost like a podcast episode, but I have a video uploaded earlier this week. It's about 16 minutes long, explaining my frustrating experience applying for the Lego Ambassador Network. So if that's something that's interesting to you, you can go watch that. I know many of you already have. In fact, I was planning to do like a follow-up episode on that where I kind of discussed the, the comments that came in and there was a lot of great ones. There was so much discussion and feedback that I got from that. In fact, there's over 300 comments right now. I decided I'm just gonna move forward. I don't think it's something that we really need to revisit. If you wanna look through the comments, there were so many good ones. I read every single thing that came through on there, not only like for me, but against me and for the land. I think it's just a great conversation starter. And I'm, initially I was like, man, I probably shouldn't have made that video, but it's. I think it's good to have my story out there. And if people ever ask me about it, I can be like, yeah, I applied for the land. And, Here's the results. So that is that concludes our land portion of today's episode. Let's move on to some positive things. Like, yeah, that can be our, our topics here. Positive Lego topics or something like that. It's gonna be the title of this episode. Let's talk about this week and how I started off. Oh, there's one other topic that related to that video. I noticed later in this week, not only in the land video, but also our mail time video, my microphone was starting to get a little sketchy on this, on this camera. And that's something else I wanted to bring back to Patreon. I've got something that I'm planning to use my Patreon money for that went on sale today that I think could take my production quality, not only of this channel, but also this podcast to the next level. And it's related to camera equipment and recording. So stay tuned for that. I wanna thank the patrons for that. But if you hear some static in this, it's a complete failure on my part. This is the, the only microphone that I have for this and it's my best one. And it's the thing that makes this sound good, but occasionally as of late, it's been, it's been acting up after two years and lots of videos. So I feel like I got my money's worth, but we, we, we're on the cusp of upgrading. Probably gonna be one of those things that it doesn't even make a sound and now I look like an idiot because I talked about it. But anyways, let's move on to where my week started at. And that was finishing the Statue of Liberty, which I absolutely have right here beside me. And you may notice if you're watching this as opposed to listening to this, my Statue of Liberty's face is back to the stock face. And that's because I decided that that looks better. Earlier in this week, I made a video showing JK Brickworks idea for changing the face and making it a little more detailed. And I went through the tutorial on doing that and I shared my experience with it. And as soon as I put that new face on there, I was like, yeah, I don't think I like that as much as what I thought I did two years ago when I watched the video originally. The comments were very mixed on that as well. I love having comments just for the fact that I can get your feedback and see if I'm the crazy one or maybe you're the crazy one. The face that I put on it, the JK Brickworks face, Someone commented that it looks like the statues on Easter Island. And if you don't know what that is, do a quick Google search right now and you'll absolutely see it and you won't be able to unsee it. The face that he made, because it has like this, this uh, one by two cheese slope eyebrow thing, it looks like a Neanderthal. It looks like a caveman. It looks like, I don't know. It just, I couldn't unsee it. And it made it look very masculine because it has this very sloped out eyebrow. There's a, there's a strong nose, which is fine for the Statue of Liberty. And then there's just like a normal mouth, but the jawline goes from being tapered in like on the stock face to very squared off. And it gave it like a very masculine look that, 
I wasn't loving, and uh, some of you weren't either. Some of you said you didn't like any of the faces, one or two, one being the stock, one, two being JK Brickworks. So I was like, you know, I think what I'm gonna do is just go with what Lego had here, and I think it's the better of the two worlds. And I, I kind of just watched his tutorial in reverse and just kind of took everything back off and put it back. So that's where I'm at on that. I don't know if you if you thought the other one looked better. I mean, it's it's really up to personal preference and taste. And I don't think there's any one right answer for almost anything in this world. In this case, it just comes down to what you like better. And I think Lego did a good job. I made the joke in that video that the dude that was trying to do it like spent so much time on this thing and then he got to the face and was just like, I'm stumped. Let's just throw this one piece on here. But what I think truly happened is that they tried a number of things, including the JK Brickworks fix, and it, it just nothing looked right. So the Nexo Knight Shield piece is the is the win, and that's what they went with. And at this point, after trying an alternative, I think I agree with it. Although maybe there are some other alternatives out there too. And if you have any ideas for it, or if you can link any videos or images, let me know because I'm open to to try and some different things out with it. Maybe we can make a follow up on it. Be like, this is the perfect face for the Statue of Liberty, and people are like, Greg. What? Just move on to the next set. It's fine. This The face is fine. Anyways, let's go on to the next topic here. I want to talk about storytelling in LEGO videos. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately and something that I want to work on getting better at. It kind of comes up in my video this week where I built the LEGO Hot Rod promo. If you remember that video, I, I, it could be like, let's talk about one scenario, which is you... One, you, you build a set on camera and then you show it and you review it, right? Or you just show the, the built set and you review it. That's one style and that's the very informative style. That's what I think a lot of people in the LEGO community uh, have have come to expect and come to enjoy and appreciate, including the LAN, right? Even though we're not gonna go back there. What I'm trying to do is something a little bit different. I think that could make me a little you know, make me stand out a little bit and also make my videos more fun to make, first of all, and maybe a little more interesting to make because I don't have the technical knowledge of Lego that a lot of these amazing reviewers have. And I've, I've, I've come to accept that. But what I can do is put my own little twist on things. And what I would love to do with Lego reviews and just my Lego videos in general is to have a little bit of a storyline that goes with them. So if you go back to that Hot Rod video, this is an example and something that I'd like to get better at and maybe do more of. I start the video off by saying about how messy the Brickitech studio is and how Mrs. Brickitech told me she's gonna have some very strict uh, penalties for me or punishments or something if I don't get this place cleaned up. So I say, I do what any normal husband would do and that's clean, no, we're gonna make more of a mess. And I pull that off the shelf and then I, I hit a live stream up where I start building this. And the storyline was already, I think, kind of interesting that, okay, I'm, I'm bailing on this, this terrible mess of a studio and building this. But then this thing happened that I thought just turned this into a complete gem. And that was that Mrs. Brickitech saw me go live in a notification on her phone and then comes down here and yells at me. And I was like, oh no, I'm busted. Not only, like it wasn't scripted by, by any means, but it was like, it was like an actual like candid moment. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good for the video because I was already crafting the storyline that I was gonna get in trouble. And then I actually got in trouble. And then, you know, you finish the set and I did my review on it saying like how I felt about it. Not necessarily like, now there's a uh, 32 uh, blue elements on here. And this element was first found in Lego in 1993. No, I'm like, this is what I, like about it this is what I don't like that was funny when I got busted and best part of the video but yeah that was that was where I kind of want to take my channel I know we're kind of there a little bit with with Clark man being in the videos and our, our stuff just isn't what you would ordinarily see and it's definitely not as technical but it, I think it I think it has character and that's that's kind of like what what I guess I'm shooting for so I'm thinking about reading some books on storytelling and how to get better at that. I know Tim Schmoyer, who's a guy that does a lot of YouTube tutorial videos, he had a book that he was recommending on storytelling because he's saying just in vlogs alone, it really helps to have those elements that you see in a movie, like you have the rising action, you have the, you know, the 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 the, the climax, the the unexpected things. Like I don't even know all the elements, but I just know like when when you watch a movie, you see like the hero's journey and the the setbacks and the, the things that he overcomes, and that's kind of what I think can make some really epic videos here on this channel. And uh, if you start to see more of that, just know that I'm I'm trying to get better and I hope I can make some content that you guys can enjoy and and maybe like laugh at or be entertained by and maybe even a little bit informed, just, uh, just a tiny little bit. So that was something I've been thinking about a lot this week and something I'm, I'm really excited about. But that takes us to our next topic. I told you about the studio being a giant mess. And if you look behind me, if you're watching this on YouTube, you loser, get over the podcast. I'm just kidding. You can do whatever you want, but uh, it does have some benefits of being here on YouTube. You can see my table's completely clean. 
my floor is clean. I do still have this the, the kitchen or bar attack area that still needs the boxes dismantled and stuff, but I made a lot of progress here Friday morning on cleaning up the Brickitech studio. I spent about two hours just kind of taking care of things and uh, putting things into totes where they should go, getting rid of boxes that I had sitting down here. Uh, not Lego boxes, but just like boxes full of stuff and just organizing better. And my gosh, it felt good. If any of you guys are in a, a pickle like me, if you go back and watch my my vi the Hot Rod video and you see the beginning of that episode and then you watch my, my video at the end of this week comparing the difference, it's like night and day and it just feels so much calmer down here. It makes me feel like I, I wanna be down here and it's not just a cluster. Uh, obviously still a lot more work to do, but I was thinking this morning, one of the things that kind of led me to the, the place that I was at where it was such a giant mess was if you just let one thing sit out, it's easy to let that second thing sit out. And then when you have two things sitting out, it's even easier to let that third thing sit out. And when you have three things sitting out, I mean, it just, it just goes on and on. So when your place is immaculate, it's very hard to have that one thing that's sitting there. It looks so out of place because it's like, well, this, this is a clean area. But when you have hundreds of things out and you have this other thing that you put out, it, it, it doesn't have that effect, right? It's just like another thing. It's, it's why hoarders don't realize how bad their situation is because it just keeps stacking up. But if you're in a house that's completely mint and you put a piece of like, uh, like trash or something, or like a balled up piece of paper on the counter, you're going to look at that and be like, that, that is not the way it's supposed to be. And that's what I want for my studio. So I've been doing a lot of that. I plan to do more this week in between making Lego videos. I'd really want to have the focus be on cleaning this place. And I know I said before, like that was my focus for June, but June was such a beautiful month outside and we were busy with RC trucks and all that stuff. And we're still doing that, but now the days are getting like really hot to the point where it's like, oh, I think I'm just going to stay in the studio today and work on things. And the, it, it felt really good getting that done. And I, I guess I, I share this not to brag and I hope nothing I ever say comes off as bragging because it's certainly not, but maybe it can inspire you to like, you're sitting at your desk right now. Maybe you're watching this and you're like looking at your space and you're like, man, maybe I'll, maybe I'll clean up something. Just pick something up pick two things up, put them in a, another bin, put them in a tote, do something, even if it's not throwing stuff away. Like if you don't want to commit to throwing things away that you, that are probably trash, but you deem aren't, just put it in an organized place. And if you don't think about it for six months, like I'm doing with my Lego boxes, just take that whole tote and just dump it out into the dumpster or something like that. That's my advice to you. But I can tell you that the joy that I've gotten from cleaning up just makes you want to do more of that. It's almost like exercising, like inherently exercising sucks, right? It's not something you necessarily want to do. But when you start, you get that feeling of, of, of like making progress and the fact that you're doing something good for yourself, it makes you want to do more of that. And that's kind of how I'm, I am with this. And I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So you're going to see more and more of this. The uh, backlog wall over here that's getting pretty sparse is going to be moved and all my displayed pieces are going to go over here. It's going to be great. The extra table that I have is going to be going uh, directly beside me here for uh, classic land. Uh, I'm stoked about that as I know many of you guys are. And then I have an extra table that I might bring down. I might not. I do love the idea of having lots of space, but we're just going to kind of work with things and see how things fit and hopefully have this place being exactly the way I want it. And not that long of a time. I do know once Clark goes to school, that's going to give me like an infinite time to really buckle down and organize. And I think that's going to be where I get into a lot more mock making and just sorting my pieces in general to make that process easier because I want to have more of a creative element to this channel. I don't want to be the guy that's just like, Hey, here's the haul that I did. Here's, you know, I, I want to, I want to show off my, my creative abilities, not only for myself, but to you guys. And I like the idea of, of sharing things with the world and getting feedback and making them better and better. And, and it can be like an interactive thing. So that's like my, my big dream on this channel and something that I really want to do. So hopefully you're along with me on that ride. I think you'll appreciate the things that I come up with. Me and Mrs. Brickitect, or Mrs. Brickitect and I, she's an English teacher. She, she, we were talking about an idea that I had for my brick separators because I, I've acquired quite a few of them throughout the years thanks to mail time. And we have an idea for the brick separators that I think can be really epic and a, an amazing display piece, a massive one. And she started working on that and seeing how we're going to do it on Friday night. And it was cool because there was actually a space for her to come down to, and it wasn't like a disaster. So all these things kind of go back, back into each other. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm it makes me happy and I'm excited about that. So if I would say that's my victory of the week. I know we're, we talk about small victories and I left last week's episode off given some uh, motivation and some encouragement and advice for a gentleman that was, that was struggling physically. And I was just like, just take that one step, you know? 
and that's that's kind of you know practice what you preach, Greg, and that's that's where I'm at here. So we took that we took that little step, and I want to keep taking more steps. I want to talk now. We transition into, I guess this is the non-Lego se segment of this here. I want to talk about my RC adventure of the week. This week I got myself, or ourselves, because Clark is, uh, I was going to say 50% of my RC adventures, but he's probably more more than that because I, I do a lot of this for him to, to, not only for him to enjoy it, but to share it with him. We got a Traxxas TRX4 Sport, which is a rock crawler truck. And we got that thing this week. We took it around outside, ran it a bit, and then we took it up to camp and had some fun up there. It did end up raining at our day up at camp. We did a Lunch and Lego episode on our Patreon. And I was like, yeah, we're going up to camp. And then uh, the weather kind of turned, but it was still fun. We had a good time up there with that. And uh, there's gonna be a lot more adventures with that to come, but that was kind of like my RC adventure. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, we did get one other RC truck yesterday, though. I'm getting a little out of hand, but man, this this hobby is is something else. And with with doing that as an outdoor thing and Lego as an indoor thing, I feel like I found like the perfect uh, whatever whatever this is when you when you come together like mesh men, meld melding mesh mending <laughs> something like that. Uh, I found like I feel like we we have a good balance there. That's a topic we could talk about every week. Finding balance. That's always what I'm trying to do, but I've been doing better at it. I want to talk about next when we're flying through this episode. It's going to be a shorter one, I think, because I don't know. It just seemed like a quick week. I want to talk about my movie of the week. And the movie of the week is Hamilton. You guys probably heard of Hamilton. It's on Disney Plus right now. So most of you, I think a lot of you guys have Disney Plus. In my opinion, the greatest value in entertainment for any kind of streaming channels, like it's, I think it's $7 a month. And you get access to the whole Disney vault. Like they just crank that thing open for you and you can walk through and grab any kind of animated movie from, from your childhood or maybe even before your childhood. And they own, I think, 21st Century Fox. There's a lot of those movies on there as well. There's Nat Geo on there. There's a lot of Fox cartoons from the 90s that I really love, like X-Men is on there. There's tons of stuff on there. And one thing that they added this week was Hamilton. So Mrs. Brooktech saw that and she sat down and started watching it, as did I. And I was just like, I was loving it. I've listened to the Hamilton soundtrack quite a bit. It was on Amazon Music Unlimited or whatever they call their music streaming service. There's so many services. Uh, I listened to it on my way and back forth to work like for an entire month straight. I loved it so much. But the one thing that I'll say about the listening to it as opposed to watching it is that you miss out on who's saying what sometimes. Like it's easier when you see the characters to know who's who's singing or rapping certain things as opposed to when you listen to it. Plus there's just this ultimate level of appreciation that I have for these people when they're not there. It's, it's essentially like making a one take movie. They're not only singing, but they're making choreographed dancing and moves around the stage, but they're also acting and doing all these things all at once that I'm just like, how is this even possible? Like, especially when like someone's standing on a table and he jumps up and they pull the tablecloth out and he jumps back down. I'm like, how many times did you have to practice that? And I just have so much appreciation for the mastery of something like that. Like how many times did they run through this to get it just right? Obviously these people are wildly talented and amazing singers, actors, dancers, all of that in one. To be talented in all those things is incredible, but to be able to do that fluidly without any kind of interruption and then the whole cut entire cast come together to do that as well and not make any mess ups, it's crazy. Like you think about a movie, like you could take your biggest movie star how many times do they have to reshoot the same take over and over and over and over again? Because you have that luxury. In fact, I do that here. If you guys would have seen how many times I tried doing the intro for this episode today, you'd be appalled. But to, to know that you these people have the ability to do that without any kind of interruption and just like a fluid state is just remarkable. And that's mostly what I was taken back by because I'd already heard all the, I knew the story. I heard all the songs. Unfortunately, the one drawback is they all got stuck in my head again. So we're, we're <laughs> I got all of, all of the Hamilton songs stuck in my head. And uh, I would, I would share some of that with you right now, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to lose you. So I won't be singing any Hamilton in this episode. Uh, may, <laughs> I was going to make a joke if we got enough likes, but no, I don't think there's any number of likes that can make me come on here and sing Hamilton. It's it's really worth your time. It's it's kind of long, but if you want to know more about Alexander Hamilton, one of our founding fathers here in the United States, it it's definitely something that you should you should look into. And if you don't want to sit down and read a history book, this is a history book in, in three hours with some modifications and and things um, kind of thrown in to make it more more dramatic. But it flows really well, and you kind of get the whole backstory. So I I just thought that was really cool. 
Uh, there's one other topic here that I want to discuss next before we go into Lego or into feedback from the last episode, and that is that the Clark cast has moved. I know we had a lot of people asking when the next Clark cast is going to be, or Clark's podcast, Clark's Missing Pieces. It's gone through a number of things. Clark Talks Minecraft. Clark recorded another episode, or I think two other episodes of the Clark cast here in, in the end of June. And I was like, you know, I could throw these up in the Lego channel, but they really don't fit in with the content that I'm doing there. But on Greg's World, I feel like they fit so much more. So I took the first two episodes and I made them private on this channel and I put them up over there. In fact, today I'm uploading like four four episodes of the Clark cast. So uh, I think I think the people that watch that channel are really gonna love it. A lot of them don't come over to Brickitect and I think they're really gonna enjoy seeing what Clark has, has to say and what he has to talk about. And we're gonna try to make that like a regular thing each week. Not only for Clark just to get things out there because he's always talking about his day in Minecraft and stuff. I'm like, why don't I record this? But also to look back on someday. I think having interviews with, with a five-year-old, a six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, as they get older, I think that could be really fascinating for me to, to look back on when Clark's grown up and be like, oh my gosh, look at him at five. He's talking about his, his first time playing Minecraft or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's kind of wild to have that, that moment in time frozen like that and to just have like a candid interview or it's not really an interview it's just him talking and he just he just sits down and talks about whatever sometimes lots of things sometimes really nothing he just goes on but no matter what it is i i just i really love them and i hope that people over on greg's world enjoy it as well and i think they will so i move those if you're wondering what happened to them or if you're wondering why they're being uploaded again it's it's going over to a new audience over there and all of the all of the future episodes will be uploaded after that so yeah, that is, that's pretty much my week uh, and rapid succession here, but uh, now we get into I, what I think is my favorite part of these episodes, and that's viewer feedback. If you guys remember back the last episode, I talked a good bit about Lego art, the new theme that they have coming out that's essentially like a mosaic. There's uh, the Darth Vader ones, actually all the Star Wars Sith ones. You got Darth Vader, you got Darth Maul, and also Kylo Ren. Then you have the Iron Man and Hulkbuster ones, and then you have the Beatles ones as well. And I talked about how I felt about those, gave some background information, and talked about which ones I want to get, which is the Darth Maul one especially, and quite possibly I would buy three of them to make the uh, the, the long uh, portrait-sized or whatever uh, Darth Vader one. Uh, we had some feedback on that, which I was really happy to see. Some people love it, some people hate it, and we're going to start out here with Matthew. I had a feeling this was the case, but I just wanted to verify it. The Matthew's comment that I'm about to read, He's our new patron from this week. So Matthew, thank you for joining Patreon, Patreon, and thank you for leaving this comment, which I'll read here. He says, as a hardcore Beatles fan and Lego fan, the Beatles mosaics are probably the most excited I've been for anything Lego in a long time. The portraits of the members that the actual set builds are the same as the photos I had framed in my dorm room this past year, and I would love to have some Lego variants to replace those. Now, while $480 is a very hefty price, I can't own just one. I think I'll get one on release and wait for promo slash sales to bring up uh, to pick up the other three. Anyways, that's just my two cents on the new art theme. As a 19-year-old, love the podcast. Keep it up, Greg. Matthew, thank you for, for that message, and I think you hold the same sentiment that I think a lot of Beatles fans do, is that... I want them all. I love the fact that you have some nostalgia related to those those photos. It does kind of come down to the price tag though. I think I said last week, if you're a hardcore Beatles fan, you're probably gonna find a way to get all four or you're probably just gonna pick your favorite Beatle like John or Paul or Ringo maybe. And I think these things are gonna go crazy. And I, I think just like you and especially for older people that have been around for a while, maybe have a lot more disposable income than what a 19 year old has. I think they're just going to be stacking up on these and Lego's going to be like, cha-ching, cha-ching. But we have another uh, message here regarding the mosaics. This is from Bricklog, who says, love the podcast. Thank you, sir. It says, I saw someone on Reddit wrote some sort of program that found that you'll have about 90% of the pieces to build a second mosaic if you buy one set. I can't find the exact post from a couple days ago, so this information may not be completely accurate. I believe it may have even been talking specifically about Star Wars mosaics. So you could possibly buy one copy of the set and order the rest of the required pieces for much less than $120. And if that is the case, I think that's awesome. I would love that, but to me it seems like it seems like a stretch. I don't know I don't know about you guys, but like you have that all the pieces to make the mosaic. I don't and say that's a few thousand pieces. I don't know if they would include a few thousand extra pieces for the next one, but if that's the case, I would buy the extra 10% of pieces to make a second one. But then I still need another one though because if I want to make the big Darth Vader, but I do want the Darth Maul one. Or I should just stick with my Darth Maul bust. I don't know. This to me, like $120, I feel like I could throw in. 
I would like to do it just where I, I live stream my, myself building it because it's kind of like a mindless thing. You're like putting putting studs on, putting studs on. Uh, but I want to do a time lapse of it because I think the time lapse could look fantastic as you go across, almost like a printer. It's like ch -ch 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 -ch, and going up on it. Man, I think that'd be really cool. So if that is if that rumor is true, that's really awesome. If not, you, you didn't hear it here, but you did. Uh, we have a couple comments here that are against Lego art. The first one is from Adam who says, Lego art is amazing, but I think a little expensive for what seems like studs on a base plate. And I can understand that. Um, you're used to spending a hundred bucks on getting um, you know, a, a Crater Expert set or whatever to get a bunch of studs on a base plate. I can see it. You are getting about 3,000 of those studs, which is you know, a, a substantial amount. And you're also paying for the the design, I guess, of it. Even though what Matt said there earlier about it just being a, a print that already was in existence, but you also get the soundtrack thing, which isn't super appealing to me. It really just comes down to if you want Lego art or if you want stuff to play with. For me, and where I'm at in my Lego collecting journey, it seems to me that I'd be better off getting something that Clark and I can play with. Like this isn't something that he's going to enjoy building one or two playing with at all. But for me, I, I think it'd be really cool just as like a, a dad dad only thing where I'm just kind of like sitting down chilling talking to you guys and and building it up So I'm, I'm still on board with it to get three of them though That's that's maybe where I where I drop off a little bit The next comment against Lego art comes from Daniel who says I like mosaics But as a set these are overpriced trash I make my own mosaics for a fraction of the price and I was trying to figure that out too I actually asked Dave about this. I was like say I had the the directions on how to build this how much would it cost me on BrickLink to get 3,000 studs or however many studs it takes to build Darth Maul? Would it actually be cheaper? Would I save anything? And he seemed to think that the, the cost of the studs, if you're getting 3,000 of them, would actually be more if you were to order on a BrickLink. So I would say if you already have thousands of studs already sitting around, there's no sense of buying this if you can make it yourself. And I totally agree with that. But if you don't, and this is like a, a product that you're interested in getting, especially if you want the soundtrack with the interviews and stuff on it, I would do it. But again, everything, like I said earlier, comes down to personal preference. You may love something that I hate. I may hate something that you love. And it's just, it's the way it is. This did make me think of a topic though on some things like you'll watch somebody talk about something you have no interest in. But if they have enough passion about it or excitement about it, sometimes that can bring you over. Like this has happened to me watching Lego videos and Lego reviews before. Like I've I've been like, yeah, I'm not into that at all. But then I watch the person do it and I'm like, yeah, actually that's pretty cool. And I, I think that's something to say about YouTube and the power of making online video, especially when it comes to product reviews. Because if you have this thing in your mind and this could go around anything in life, you have your mind set on something be open because if you watch something or listen to something and that person has a different opinion, maybe maybe you'll come around and see that they're actually right. And that's that's kind of an example of that. Uh, next segment here is this miscellaneous comment. I had a couple here. Uh, first one is from Brad's Life. He says, Greg, I think the art is great, but if you really want the Darth Maul, I recommend brick linking the parts. I've done this and it saved me $250. I, I only spent about $200 just on the parts and all you need is find the right stores and right prices. He's talking about the Darth Maul bust and that's exactly what I would do with that because Darth Maul is such a basic build. I would probably just buy the black and red bricks and try to build it myself. I don't need the box. I don't need anything fancy with it. I probably would get a, a paper instruction manual just because I prefer that. But I think brick linking it is 100% the, the smart thing to do if you're just going to have it sit on your shelf and not have it as like a, a collector's piece in a sealed box. So thank you for the recommendation there. And um, yeah, maybe soon, one of these days, we'll see a, a Darth Maul haunting the background of my studio. I would love that. It's my most wanted Lego set at the moment. Uh, next comment comes from Just Build It. It says, hey Greg, wouldn't it be cool if Lego made a new theme called Lego History, where they go back in time and remake Lego sets for people who didn't get the chance to get sets that are retired now. For example, they could remake the Yellow Castle. And yes, I've talked about this before. I think on this podcast, Lego, if you would just like to, I'll just hand my wallet over to you and you can take as much money as you want out of it. I mean, there's not a lot in there, but you could have it. I would love it if they did that. Like all these vintage sets from, for me, it'd be like the, the, the 80s and 90s. I know for maybe some of the older adults, collectors, maybe even further back than that. And maybe that'd be even cooler if they went further back. But to get a set from your childhood, like freshly packaged 
and have it in the store and then be able to buy it and build it would be amazing. Like I see this with Transformers. They have like the old vintage Optimus Prime repackaged and sitting in the store with looking like it came straight out of like 1985. It looks great. And I would love it if Lego did that. I think it would be a cash cow for them. If you're trying to cater to the adult audience, like you're trying to do Lego art and a lot of other things these days, give us the sets that we, we had as a kid or the sets we missed out on. Like that is, I think of anything, that's what adult collectors would like. The only downside of that would be people that actually do collect the vintage stuff. It'd be hard then to be like, is this the new one or the old one? And things would get muddy on eBay and stuff. So you would have that issue, but I think overall it'd be a positive experience. But I am definitely curious to see what you guys think about that. That'd be a great topic to talk about next week. Like, what would you like to see? Would it work? How would they do it? Could they charge a premium on it? Because I think they could. You could take a set that maybe would be a typical $50 Lego set, jack that price up and make it like a limited run exclusive thing for any individual store. That'd be amazing. I would love that. We have a couple more things here. Oh, this is, uh, I shouldn't even put this on here, but this is funny. I was going to call this the uh, land forbidden comments of the week. These are comments from a falls that watch our channel. Uh, this first one here is from Becky. She says, I'm 55. I started watching your videos for the Lego. I love building the sets. Clark, is the same age range as my grandchildren. My grandsons love RC too. I enjoy watching interaction with him. Thank you, Becky. We had a comment last week. I think they said that they were our oldest viewer and Becky, Becky proved them wrong. But then Tracy comes along and she says, I'm 61 and I love your posts. What? There's an A-fall watching this? Like who would have thought? But Tracy, Becky, thank you guys for, for one, being in the demographic that you are and also women and watching my channel. I think that's really cool and I, I thank you for that. I do have one final comment here, actually two. This first one here is from Zippy, the person I, I gave a little bit of advice to at the end of the last episode. Don't go back and watch it. It got a little emotional and a little embarrassing for me, but it was, it was where I was at in the moment. So uh, I'm gonna read Zippy's reply to me here. He says, wow, Greg, thank you so much for the encouragement at the end. Sorry, I got you emotional. I really appreciate it. Great podcast. Lovely to hear about the nature walks too. I'll continue getting my goals done. Keep enjoying the RC cars. And I thought that was a nice comment from Zippy. I, Zippy, I hope you give me a comment like once a month and just tell me how you're making out, dude. Cause I, I'm pulling for you. And I know everyone else is here as well. Just like I said in the last episode. And now I'm gonna send you guys out. I, I try not to put too many comments like this in Missing Pieces because some of these come off as though it's just like, um, I don't know, like boosting my ego, but I, I'm gonna read this because I feel like there's a really positive message here. And I'm not gonna get emotional during this one. I'm, I, this is, this is my, my, my challenge and my, my, my quest to myself. This one is from Benjamin. He says, hey Greg, I just wanted to write a comment to thank you for helping me get through all of the problems in my life. Crap. <laughs> Uh, I recently lost my grandmother to COVID-19 and listening to these podcasts has really helped me and inspired me. I honestly don't know what I do without content like yours, as it has made me smile on days where everything seems hopeless. Your channel is a constant reminder to me that chasing your dream and working hard will ultimately make you happy no matter the setbacks. So in the end, Greg, I just want to thank you for all the awesome content they've created. It has truly helped me be a happier, better person. Benjamin! <laughs> Why, Benjamin? Don't send me comments like this, but send me comments like this. I, I, I think that's awesome, man. Thank you so much for the encouragement for me. Like, if I, I encourage you, like, how do you think that makes me feel? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm gonna start recording Missing Pieces episode 43 right now because that, that's what I live for, dude. That's awesome. I'm sorry that happened to your grandmother, but stay strong. You can get through anything in life, one step at a time. Just, just keep going, dude. Just keep going. And that's my advice to everybody out there. There's lots of things in life that that hurt and, and cause us pain, but it's how you react to those things that can make all the difference. And as hard as it seems to get to that place, it's way over there. Just like I say in every episode, just take that little step, pick that one thing up off your table. It can make all the difference and make you a happier person. So thank you guys so much for, for tuning into this episode of Missing Pieces. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support this podcast, there's a number of ways you can do it. Number one thing, you can leave me some feedback for next week so I have somebody to talk to and something to talk about other than what's creeping around in my mind up here. You can leave a uh, review, that's the word, on Apple Podcast if you wanna do that. Uh, you can join our Patreon, that's a big help. We do Patreon live streams every Tuesday afternoon. We do Lunch and Lego every Friday night. We do their patrons only live stream and it's a blast. I love the community over there and uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's about it. Thank you guys so much for, for being here and uh, hope you have a glorious rest of your week. We'll see you or we'll find you in the next Missing Pieces.